there, and welcome back to this Spring Development course. So, last time we took a general overview of Spring and built our very first Spring application. We did that, of course, without really knowing what we're doing. So, we understood what exactly we're doing, how we were creating the XML file, the class, and how it got it from the XML file. But we were doing that without really any knowledge of the theory of what goes on behind it. So that's really what we're going to take a look at in this lesson. So we're going to take a look at the concepts that Spring is built on. Now, there's going to be a little bit of reading. So um, perhaps it's not going to be all diagrams and code samples. And it's not all going to make sense immediately. But later on, as you're going to be going over code examples in later lessons, you're going to start to think back, back to this lesson and think about how we actually did do something useful in this lesson, sort of. So understand what was happening here, what we were talking about. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing we need to understand is dependency injection. So the technology that Spring is most identified with is the dependency injection, DI, flavor of inversion of control. The inversion of control, IOC, is a general concept, and it can be expressed in many different ways. Dependency injection is merely one concrete example of inversion of control. All right, so you got we got uh, quite a bit of understanding. So from here, uh, we're not going to be actually going over what dependency injection is in this slide. That's going to be the next slide. But um, here, we just understood that dependency injection is just one of the examples of inversion of control. So what is inversion of control? Well, when writing a complex job application, application classes should be as independent as possible of other Java classes to increase the possibility to reuse these classes and to test them independently of other classes while unit testing. Remember, this is called abstraction. Dependency injection helps in gluing these classes together and at the same time keeping them independent. All right. so. Now let's take a look at what is dependency injection. So what exactly is dependency injection? Let's look at these two words separately. Here the dependency part translates into an association between two classes. So what does that mean? Well, we can, a very simple example is that if we have in one class an instance of another class. So for example, we can have a class, um, I don't know, maybe class bear which has a class size. And then the size class will have, um, I don't know, maybe int height, weight, and uh, length and width. So bear, class bear, will have a variable of type size. So that's just a very simple example. All right, let's move on. For example, class A is dependent of class B. Now, let's look at the second part, injection. All this means is, class B will get injected into class A by the IOC. Remember, the IOC is the inversion of control. Okay, Dependency injection can happen in the way of passing parameters to the constructor or by post-construction using setter methods. So we'll take a look in a, a shortly uh, uh, on a example of what I just read in the last sentence here. But for now, let's actually take a look at a, at a spring-specific dependency injection implementation. So first of all, when you take a look at a bean, I, I, I completely jumped the gun there. Anyway, so what is a bean? So a, a Java bean is a Java class that should follow following conventions. It should have a no arg constructor, so just a constructor with no arguments. It should be serializable, so it, just, it should just implement serializable. And it should provide methods to set and get the values of the properties. So get and set our methods. So that's very simple. That's all that a bean is. So personally, when I was um, first learning Java, it actually took me a while to understand what a bean was because um, I, I thought it was pretty something pretty complex. But it turns out it was just a regular Java class that has get and setter methods, is serializable, and has a no arg constructor. So I and I thought that it was some completely separate thing. At that point, I, I had created many beans. I just didn't really, you know, understand that they that that's what they were. So this is what a bean is. Beans are important in Spring because it's really what we use. It's what's ba what it's based on as well. So let's take a look at exactly where we can use them. We can use them using the IOC container. 
All right. So we have more reading here. Uh, don't worry. I'm going to go over it together. And then after every, you know, point that I make, sort of, I'm going to explain it in, in, other, in other words so that, you know, you can understand it a little bit better. This is more of the uh, what's written here in the PowerPoint is more of the dictionary definition of something. And personally, I think dictionary definitions do a very bad job of explaining things. So we're going to go over it, the dictionary definition and then go over another definition together. A more human one, sort of. Anyway, let's take a look. So the spring container is at the core of the spring framework. This container will create the objects, wire them together, configure them, and manage, and manage their complete life cycle from creation till destruction. And the um, life cycle of objects is also something that we're going to go over, of course, um, in I, I believe in a, the next or after the next lesson. The spring container uses DI to manage the components, the components that make up an application. And remember that uh, DI is just dependency injection. So DI stands for dependency injection. All right, so these objects are called spring beans, which we will discuss in the next lesson. So uh, spring beans are a little bit different from regular beans. Uh, we're going to go over exactly what they do in the next lesson, as it says here. So yeah. OK, so then the container gets its instructions on what objects to instantiate, configure, and assemble by reading the configuration met metadata provided. The configuration metadata can be represented either by XML. Remember how we used the XML file in the previous lesson, how we use that to read beans. Either by the XML, Java annotations, or Java code. The following diagram represents a high-level overview, a high-level view of how Spring works. So we can see here the diagram, uh, how we have the Java Pojo classes. So this is essentially just uh, the bean classes. Think about it that way. Then we have the metadata, which will be the XML file. So then the Spring container works to, to instantiate the metadata of the type of the Pojo classes. So in the previous lesson, I believe our metadata was the XML file, and it had two beans. It was a point bean. Yeah, a point bean. Yeah, I, I I think that's correct. I hope that's correct. And then the Pojo classes would be the point the point class. And so in result, it would create a new point b point object in Java, and then it would pass that to the actual application that we wrote. All right, let's finish reading. Uh, the Spring IOC container makes use of Java Pojo classes and configuration metadata to produce a fully configured and executable system or application. So there we go. So that's essentially how how that works. All right. So now let's take a look at the final slide, I believe that we have. So here we have an example of an IOC container. Um, so uh, this is actually the code right here, you will see this is actually the code that we worked on in the previous lesson. So this is actually I, I went ahead and just screenshotted it um, just to use this. So it's what we actually used. So Spring provides the following two distinct type of con types of containers. Spring Bean Factory Container and Spring Application Context Container. Let's take a look at exactly what they do. So the Application Context Container includes all functionality of the Bean Factory Container, so it is generally recommended over Bean Factory. Bean Factory can still be used for lightweight applications like mobile devices or applet-based applications where data volume and speed is significant. So yeah, so essentially all, all, all we mean by this is that there are two basic types of containers. So the Bean Factory container, Application Context container, they do the same exact thing. So they just read, uh, take metadata, so metadata, and then they convert it into the Pojo classes. And th each of them is a different Spring container. So Spring Bean Factory container and Application Context container. So just two different types of containers that do exactly the same thing. All right, and so we have actually already created an example application using the Spring Application Context Container, as shown on the right. Um, I did not get that confused. Um, I actually had this code to the left of the screenshot at first, but then it didn't really fit, so I had to move it to the right, um, and I forgot to change the as shown on the right. So um, I, I didn't get that confused. It's actually supposed to be left. Let me change that right now. There we go. Okay, so. As you can see here, I have my application context container. Now, application context is actually just an interface. So we can't instantiate it. We have to instantiate one of the built-in classes that Spring provides. And in this case, we used class path XML application context container. So I mean, the class name is just application context. But then 
um, is actually a container. And then we just put in the, since it is so specific, so it gets the XML file from the class path, and then it's gonna get an XML file and not something different. And so we just input beans.xml, a string of the name of our file, and then that will actually be read, and our, um, and our classes that we need will actually be created, and our metadata, metadata will be converted into the final result, the ready to use application, the classes that we sort of need, the objects. All right, and there we go. So that is essentially a high-level overview of exactly what Spring does. Again, at this point, I don't expect you to understand a whole lot of this stuff. There are a lot of sort of gaps here um, because there are only, really only so much that you can cover in one lesson. So as we're going to be going over uh, specific code examples, we're going to be creating applications, you're going to think, oh, would you look at that? So, you know, we're going to be, if we may be creating a website and then we're going to get an error, you know, maybe um, application context exception, and you're going to think, oh, so that's an application context. Would you look at that? So Spring, even when we're making a Spring website, um, it's actually using application context, so the core it's using it's using core Spring. So, and then you're gonna you're gonna start to understand exactly what that does and um, understand the Spring framework as a whole. So yeah, but this has been just a high level overview that you can then take with you to the further lessons. Okay, so for homework, your job is to just read through this PowerPoint, try to understand something. Um, maybe tr and really what you should really try to do is understand where we're talking about in our in in this PowerPoint so when we're talking about uh, IOC containers for example where it actually was in our application that we made previously so really try to understand what that was and if you can link the PowerPoint to what we did in the previous lesson then you can really get this and that's that would, that would be very good but if you aren't able to do that really don't worry about it um, it will come naturally as you will be creating applications in the future lessons. All right. So anyway, um, thank you very much for tuning in this, into this lesson. I will see you next time. Until soon.